Hello, Master. Hello. Hello. Perfect. Huh? Yeah. How are you guys? Oh. Good, thank you, Master. Uh, it's good. Yes. I just want to say hello. Actually, it's not much uh, that we can talk about. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, you're welcome. Mm. In case you have any important international question or something or intergalactic question, then please tell me now. I thought you came from very far away, yeah? Mm. And then uh, I cannot see you. So this is uh, it's better than nothing, right? Yes. Mm? yes, Master. Thank you, Master. You can hear me, huh? Yes. Loud and clear. Very good. Excellent. I have some good, uh, good people here, that's why. <laughs> very, very busy I have been these days because my dogs are not well. <sighs> he took the full blow, you know, and now he could hardly walk and he, he could not eat. We have to run him to the vet consecutively many times. And at night I could not sleep worrying about him and uh, in his situation so painful and but we have now uh, some medicine that uh, helps him a little bit but still that doesn't mean that he's well I I'm not sure if he can make it and my heart is not very light at the moment as I'm talking to you <sighs> sorry to hear master me too. I'm very sorry yes, about my dog. He is such a hero. This is the second dog ever that, uh, I mean, laid out their lives for me. I don't know if I deserve it. I'm not glad that they did. I don't know how to feel anymore at this time. I've just been sleepless and tasteless for food because worrying about him and sit with him and comfort him, massage him and singing him song and he he was bearing it all very, very bravely and very, very heroically and that makes me even feel worse. And I knew why he suffered, that's why I feel even worse. I didn't ask him to do anything for me, but dogs, they do that especially my dogs, they are there just for me. So many things I could not uh, reveal to you. I'm just here in case you, <laughs> you need to see me like this. It's better than nothing. Thank you, Master. You're welcome, my love. You're welcome. Uh, I just want to tell you that uh, I'm not sitting pretty and doing nothing and not to see you. I I'm just really so overwhelmed these days. I have to protect myself and protect my dogs and take care of my dogs. There are two dogs in trouble. One is already better, but I don't know this big one. I don't know if he can make it. He's already pretty old. You know, when you're old, your joints and your internal organs are not the same as when you were younger, right? Eh? Yes. Same with us. And dogs, they don't live as long. Yeah, you want to say something, Lou? I'm oh, just very sad about your dogs and their suffering, Master. I know. And I know. you too. <laughs> I'm so sad, so sad. But even in his condition, he comforted me, you know. He said, you will be free from sorrow soon. So I'm scared of that word, soon. He said, don't be more sorry for me, soon. And I'm scared of that word very much. I don't want to tell you how soon either. I know we, we all have to go someday, all of us, yeah, even us humans. But still, to know that somebody sacrificed their wellness, their life for you, this is too much. Yes, and Master. Yet, and yet I could not say, let me die, because I still have work to do, and it's not arranged that way either. I cannot say that I want to die in his place, and I cannot say that I don't want to die in his place. He just did it already. I'm just in the, you know, ready-made situation. 
And now all I do is just whenever I have time, I sit with him and caress him, massaging him and reciting something to help him and using my energy to ease his uh, suffering and pain. He doesn't complain at all. He say, it will be over soon, don't worry. He say he's sorry, sorry to let me worry so much. He really say he's sorry. He always address himself, not as good love, unless when he said to me, when I asked him, who are you, whom are talking to me, and he say, your protector. Normally he just say dog. <laughs> dog wants to protect you. Oh, so cute. And uh, dog feels sorry to make you worry. Dogs love you. And I said, why you keep saying yourself to me as dog? Why don't you say something else? But he, I think he's just humble, that's why. Yeah, and whenever we don't let him come up to my area or office, I, he, he pull his face like a horse. <laughs> and I asked him, why is that? When he come up, he didn't talk to me, and I turned his head around <laughs> away, and I say, why is that? What now? He said, dog, supposed to protect master, no? And they forbid. <laughs> he mean he blamed the, the attendant's assistant, something like that. You know, he's so endearing. I say, never mind, uh, they, they just meant well, and sometimes I'm busy. That's why you cannot come. They did not mean to forbid you. You cannot forbid love, so don't worry about that. I always love you. He's so strong, so big, and you think he would never leave, you know? He would never go. But one day I just have to reckon with that. And it could be soon. I'm trying my best, but I'm also at the same time thinking, if you have to go, just go in comfort. I let you go. I, I don't want you to suffer anymore. Do you want us to pray for him, Master? Uh, just pray whatever, whatever God, heavens arrange, okay? And that he doesn't suffer too long. If he has to go, he should go. Not suffering, not prolong his suffering. Yes, Master. I cannot be that selfish. I try my best, I give him my energy, and I do, I did many things I can, and it comforts him some, somehow, but, and the medicine also, but then uh, when the time is up, you have dogs, you know, Ray? Yes, Master. Uh, many other things he told me, a lot of things. Truly, animals can be your teacher, you know? He told me many, many things, <laughs> more than you can find in any other, you know, human being or even master, because master don't always take care of some small little detail, but he knows so many things. He could be your teacher even. He told things that out of this world, and even in his condition, his soul, you know, came and told me things to make me comfort. I have written what he told me, the two pages in my diary, and still more, but I hadn't got the time to continue. I really wish I have time. What, what sort of things do dogs tell? And not like general things, but things about us, like why he is with me and uh, how many lifetime he has been with me and what was his lifetime with me, for example, like that. So these are confidential things. And I knew he'd tell the truth. I have proof and I know all these things that nobody else knows. <laughs> That's the thing. So that means that he tell the truth. What he told is real. And many other things about heavens, stuff, even he knows about Yosuke stuff. I asked him if you came from uh, originally, before he was from the fourth level. I said, and then uh, after he died, he came to Yosuke. And I said, how did you come down from Yosuke? It's uh, difficult. I can only leak out a little bit, okay? Yes, Master. Yes. Thank you, Master. Yes, Master. Other things are not for public. Maybe one day, <laughs> but I, I don't think so. Many things, you know, too fast to write, so I, I wrote it very short, just for me to know. And he said, yeah, your love, your love uh, form a tip of protection for me to come down quick. And that I know, but the dog cannot know this unless he really knew. Yes, Master. Yes, master. And uh, many other times, like, when he has to be in quarantine and all that, when he first came to some area because they don't let dogs run free so quickly, 
like in Taiwan also, and he keep telling me, comfort me, don't worry, we are not separated because you are love. Make me feel very, very comfortable here and peaceful, peaceful, don't worry. Thing like that, yes. He, he's such a gentleman, you know. And I told him, don't come back again. <laughs> no matter from where, but he's threatened to come back. And I don't want to tell you anything yet. Okay? I don't want to, and maybe I cannot. He told many things that uh, not only high-level being would know, yeah, about spiritual things, about peace, about how he understands that I work uh, day and night for the animals, for humans, because animals are connected with humans. If they continue to kill animals, then their karma will be heavier and heavier, and the planet will be destroyed. People do not understand that animals are connected with us. Not only they bless us and protect us with their lives even, but they also know so many things. And if we keep killing them, then we're killing our own blessings, like shooting your own foot. Many people don't understand that. You will be surprised how much the dog knows, and my other dogs as well. They told me things that is so amazing. They told me so many things that protect me as well. I also protect them in time of trouble, because if the negative cannot hit me, they hit them. It happened to dogs, so I had to put protection around them and around the people who work closer to the dogs and around myself also. It hasn't been released yet because we are not yet out of danger. And uh, that also cost me something. And I need to continue in retreat in order to maintain this balance so that we can still continue my work. He said that if he die, he's just a dog. If I die, it's, it's catastrophic for the universe. That's what he said. Imagine a dog say like that. Yes. But he always addressed himself as a dog. Last time, some days ago, or maybe last week, the negative was so strong because they, they used some connection with me, disciple connection, who are some close connection to, to hit us. And all the dogs jump out and barking at nothing and so frantic. And he's the one who did nothing, just laying there. And I, later, after all the frantic uh, commotions gone, I asked you, did you feel anything? Why didn't you react anything like all the dogs? He said, dog did not feel anything. He didn't say, you know, good love didn't, didn't feel anything. He said, dog didn't feel anything. He always say dog like that. If I ask him something, he say, dog this, dog that. Unless when it's some, uh, something to do with security or something, then he say, he's my protector. Yes. We have been praying for you since oh, the last you. teleconference that this oh, thank you. troubling time for you does come to a quick close. Thank you, thank you. It, it will come soon, okay? There are some great things also happening. I just don't dare tell you now, okay? Mm -hmm. I just wrote it in my diary, and maybe one day we have a chance Maybe I can disclose to you. Ah, huh? don't worry. Sounds wonderful. Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. Yes, I'm glad that I'm still okay. I just feel very sorry for my dogs. One day I will tell you the whole thing, okay? It's a long story, and right now I don't have the heart to say anything more, except just uh, relating you the outer appearances of things, yeah, of events. The thing is, whenever he get up, he yell, you know, so painfully. Normally he never make noise. Even the negative attack like that, he say, don't worry, dog doesn't feel anything. Dog didn't feel anything. He just didn't want me to worry. I knew he feels something. That's why I get worse and worse, and every time he get up, he cry. I had to be with him and massage him and give him some energy and praying for him, and then he come down. But that doesn't mean he's getting better. I don't think he's getting better. We went to so many doctors, you know, specialists and stuff, and one of your brother who, who has a very good remedy, it has no side effect and it works on me anytime. It just, I don't know, it works on my dog. It does work one leg and it went to another one. It was better and the other left and then it went to the right. He, he cannot avoid that. The negative is so mean, so mean. Now, using my low level disciple and then hitting my dogs instead like that. It's so mean and so 
despicable. I told Maya, I'm going to destroy him. And that's what I would do. But right now, I have to take care of my dog first. I have told you before that if they touch my dog, I'm going to destroy him. I have good excuse. And I was just crying. I said, oh my God, please give all the pain to me. Don't, don't punish my dog. Don't make my dog suffer. He's only a dog. He's only a dog. And the little one also, she's only a dog, but she fight for me. She fought the negative for me, both of them. And both of them got hit. One got hit too big and one a little. But even a little bit, if they touch my dog, I already told in front of the assembly two, three times, I repeat it. I said to them, if you touch my dog, I'm going to destroy you. And I will keep my promise. You mark my words, okay? I will not tolerate any longer to let him run around making excuses and, and torturing people and animals and whatever he does. That entity or that power. I will tell you one day, okay, huh? Hmm. Yes, Master. It's not just affecting my dogs, it's affecting my workers, my assistants, and when I need the people, they play games instead of helping me. they moody or do the wrong thing instead of knowing the right to do the wrong. For example, many things, I don't want to talk about it, but I know it is all the Maya, yeah? I won't let it too long. I'm just too busy right now, too busy right now. That sounds very promising if you're going to destroy Maya, Master, for all of us. I will. Yeah. Wonderful. Nobody ever did that before. I, even if I die, I will do it. I just tell you all this actually also to let you know that your dogs, your pets, your cats, they really lay down their life for you. Truly like that. I'm not sure how many humans would lay down their lives for their best friend or their family members. Not to talk about just an adopting one, <laughs> like my dogs, but dogs do. This is the second dog that did that, and the third one also. Mm, three dogs at least, that obviously uh, get hurt. Anyway, there's other things, you know, I'm just telling you like a uh, sort of stuff. I, I'm sorry, I cannot see you, but I, I try my best, no? Even just a small thing like this, you should know, I pour my love into it, because I have to organize from where I live, and then I have to organize with the where you live, and pick out some representative, not the whole bunch of people, so that we can have more peaceful environment and energy to enjoy each other. You know, you, the one who came from far away. Yeah? It's not like a simple. It took some work for me, despite all my busy schedule and the dog uh, problem. I do care about you. Yes, thank, Master. Thank you, Master, for making time for us at this very difficult time for you. I know, I know that, but I cannot be selfish because I know you came from far away and you really want to see me. You yes, didn't come here for holiday. Yeah, tell me. I just wish um, that this planet or any other physical planet in, in the universe mm. have a little more human love. Uh, why Maya should run so wildly by himself? I mean, uh, maybe you or God Almighty should uh, play some uh, rules. Yeah, but the human also are at fault. The humans, okay? We did many wrong things. We don't hit the teachers, the masters of old. We don't hit the Bibles, Ten Commandments, yeah? We did not hit the Buddha's five precepts. We did not hit Hinduism's five regulations, or Jainism, or Sikhism. We did all wrong. Maya blinded us so yeah, much in so many th ways. I know that. I know that too. But if we have tried at least, you know, to hit the Master's words, then we would have not arrived where we are today. But I'm not blaming. There's no blaming game anymore. I don't want that. I know everything is Maya as well, behind it. Yes, Master. But we did not help. You see, we even crucify Masters. 
We even kill the masters in such a horrendous way. Many masters die in such an unimaginable way. And this karma burden all of us. And that make it very difficult for any master to, to redeem it. One side is Maya. One side is us who are not strong enough, who just listen to our ego and do things sometimes just for the fun of it and without regarding of uh, any consequences. And uh, killing each other, killing animals, killing unnecessarily many things, including trees and plants. They are precious beings who protect us only, who does nothing but protecting us. You cannot imagine anything else as sweet as a tree. It's defenseless, just standing there radiating all kind of good energy and blessing towards humans and animals. And we just chop down like that without considering. Some trees are so huge, they live for a thousand years already. Their spirit are strong, strong, strong. Their energy is mighty. They are there to protect the planet, to protect all beings around them. And furthermore, each area have some trees that protect that area, so every area is protected by different trees. And we just cut them down without mercy, without thanking, without being grateful, nothing. It's no nothing. And then uh, eating animals and drinking uh, alcohol and, and taking drugs and cigarettes and all that blind us even more. And it's just like an evil circle, no? it, it will not end like that. So it takes some stronger things, strong power to do this. But that costs something. And I have to say my dogs also are a big hero for protecting me so that I can continue my work. It's not the first time. Last time, long time ago, I told a few years ago, I told you one of the dogs died for me. His name is Harley, remember? Yes. In our hotel in Austria, I still have his photo and I say, Harley, the hero. But that is the only obvious case. Actually, all my dogs are protecting me in one way or another, more powerful or less powerful, because each of them has different degree of power, just like us, and they do all their best to protect me. And they come back again and again, just for that. Even uh, did not stay in the Oscar just to come down, just so that, <laughs> to protect me, take the bullet, like that, so like the bodyguard. I feel like I'm a president, that my bodyguard took the bullets for me. Silently, unpaid, unrequested, unthankful by humanities. But I'm forever grateful to my dogs. And I'm telling you all this, even though it's a sad story and events, but for some of you or many of you who has dogs, have cats, do not take them for granted. Truly, without them, you would probably have worse things happen to you, which you don't know. <laughs> you think, okay, I'm fine, <laughs> nothing happened. No, maybe your dogs, your cat, regulated it, shielded you, okay, in some way or another. If it's not too much, then they just sick. If it's too much, they will die. It depends on how much karma or negative force that, that hit you. If they take it full blow, you know, then they die. If it's just a small thing, then they avoid you to have accident, uh, avoid you to have uh, serious sickness. And if it's serious sickness, they minimize it so that you continue to, to live. And they take on their sickness or shorten their life or whatever they do, they do it. Whatever in their might, they do anything they can. Animals are like that. That's amazing. So if you're taking in a dog or a cat or birds or ducks or geese, be mindful of them. They are there to protect you, definitely like that. Yes, Master. There is no doubt, okay? Appreciate them, love them, yes. as long as they live. Take good care of them. That's all you need to do. You might not know what they do for you, but at least you know what you do for them. <laughs>
So if they leave you one day, you will not feel regretful or feeling guilty, at least like that. Give them all the love you have, because they gave you all their love. No one else in the world they care. You are the only one in the whole world, on the whole planet. You are number one. You, only you. Even if any gods come to harm you, he would fight the god. Like that. He doesn't care who is more powerful or not. Just now on TV, I just uh, glanced, there is our noteworthy news. There's a dog named uh, Hurricane. Eh? Even he's injured, he still managed to, to stop an intruder to come into the White House, protecting the leader of America with his own life. I was on retreat, so I did not give him a shining world hero award, but I will. Because sometimes I collect them, <laughs> whatever I did not do <laughs> during retreat. Because sometimes during retreat, I also manage to do some, but not all the time. It depends on how busy I am inside. The inside work takes me a lot of time, more than the outside work. Sometimes I have to forego meals or even <laughs> bear it, not go into the bathroom so that I could finish my inside work. And then when I go out, there's the outside work waiting. <laughs> and these days, you know, normally my dogs, they're the younger dogs, yeah? Whenever they come in the house, they jump, they shout, they jump on the table even, they jump on the sofa and bed everywhere, they jump from one room to another, they run, 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 run. Because of them, I had to live in the house that they built for me, they surprised me. I mean, I don't know, 20, 30 years ago or something. I came back from lecture and then here I have a house. <laughs> but I never lived in there. I did for a very short period of time while I did not have the cave yet. And after I have the small cave, I moved in the cave and I never look at that house again. Unless sometime there's some big uh, gathering with the inside staff and, and my cave is too small. If it's only one or two person, they have to come to my cave to, do, to talk business with me. Uh, you know, bring me document or anything to discuss in my cave. But if it's more than uh, two people, then my cave cannot tolerate. <laughs> so only when I have much work, then I go to that uh, big house to discuss things, yeah, business or whatever. Uh, but now I stay there because of my dog, so that they have room to run like that. You saw one of the, the dog who speaks English, she run like that, yeah, from one room to another, but that wasn't the most uh, obvious, because she, she saw the camera and then she doesn't run that much. But if no camera, she run from one room to another, she run back out to the corridor, run to the wherever, then run back again, jump on bed, jump on sofa, jump on the table, even this high, I don't know how we can ever jump it ourselves. And we are higher than them. Uh, you know, the working table, yeah, they jump on that and they jump everywhere. So at least I have some room for them to jump. But this is not yet, okay? I'm telling you that, so coming to uh, another <laughs> episode. <laughs> so because of that, I never had them on my retreat. How can you do retreat like that? Yeah, huh? <laughs> yeah. The six of them. Mm? And they have to come in six times a day or three times a day. Oh, they come out one time, they come in, and so all together six times. Come out just as noisy as come in. <laughs> they scratch my door, want to say goodbye. <laughs> uh, we are going out for a walk, we come back, thing like that. And I say, I know, just go, man, go. <laughs> Sometimes I have to yell at them in order for them to go. Otherwise, they don't go. They hide under the table, they hide under the, my bed, and I blame my assistant for not taking them out. I say, Master, we look everywhere. We cannot see them. We thought, we thought they're out, and then we go out, look, we don't see them. We come back in, they're not here. And we keep calling them. One day, I really knew that. They're hiding under the table. They don't want to go out. They don't want to leave me. Uh, in the name of protection. Yeah, good excuse. Uh, <laughs> all of them the same. So I have to get up for my meditation or whatever I do and, and, and yell at them, out, now, you know? Then they run with their tail under <laughs> their legs. <laughs> Otherwise, they don't listen to the assistant. Yeah. If they don't want to go out, no one can make them. <laughs> all right. But then this retreat, because 
two dogs are sick, yes? And one dog are heavily uh, infected by the negative power. I have to dilute it so she doesn't hurt anymore, okay? She doesn't hurt other, and she doesn't go too deep into the negative penchant. So three dogs I have to take care of, and then other, of course, I feel sorry, so they take turn to come up, yeah? Like every time come two dogs, and the uh, zealous one, only one dog, okay? And normally even just one dog, they come scratching, they jump, <laughs> they yell, they cry until I open the door. And Pat Pat said, okay, what now? And then they jump, run around me, licking my toes or whatever they do, licking hands, they jump on my shoulder, licking my face. Then I have to go take a shower, <laughs> etc., etc. But this time, no. I told them I'm in retreat, okay? I let you come up so that you might be in my environment, but I only come out when I'm ready. None of you scratching, screaming, crying, uh, making noise, or hinting, or even whining quietly, nothing. Otherwise, you're not allowed to come back. Got that, all of you? Got. Dig, dig. Okay. Truly, they kept their promise. Oh, I don't know how, because normally they come up, they cannot contain. They just have to jump and run, jump and run, back and forth, back and forth, like a yo-yo, you know, <laughs> fast than a UFO or something. They run fast and fast and fast and fast. Even if I give them a veggie bone, they would not stop to take it. Or they just zoom by it, take it, and then it drop on the floor, and they zoom back again and try to take it, but too fast to, to take it. So they just zoom back and forth, back and forth, don't care about the Jew, nothing. <laughs> And how can they this time, you know, just a few days apart when I say I'm on retreat, they do nothing. Came up so quiet, I didn't even know they came or they went. Of course, when i out of Samadhi, I opened the door, then they all zoom in again. Zoom, zoom, <laughs> zoom, zoom, zoom. <laughs> then I know, okay, I know you are here, huh? Sometimes I miss them. Uh, I don't always come out on time for their session, you know, because they take turn, yeah? But more or less, they, they have a chance to see me. And then if I sit there and meditate, they also sit there. They don't make trouble at all. And when they came up and my door is open or not open, my room, they don't come inside. One time, just two days ago, I, I suddenly cough. And because I cough and the door is open, so the, the one who normally was very zealous, he tiptoe, you know, tiptoe quietly, slowly tiptoe and go next to my bed, but don't say anything. <laughs> And then I feel something. <laughs> I open my eyes and there she is, you know, wagging tail, slowly, slowly. <laughs> Sorry, can I, can I, can I? I said, okay, you already come in and you say, can I? What for? <laughs> then, of course, I hug, hug her and then they are like that. Yeah, normally she would jump even on my bed and not to talk about tipping, towing and... You know, and, and the tail is like a fan like that. No, normally they whack like crazy, and they jump like crazy. <laughs> and they run fast past me, past anything, on sofa, on under sofa, everywhere they run. Lucky the room is big enough for them to run, but they run back and forth, you turn and back and forth, you turn back and forth. So you see, they understand everything. And I was so surprised, because I thought, first I... I took in only the sick ones, yeah, so that I have to take care and watch over them and heal in them, whatever I can, with my energy. And then uh, and later, the one dog already getting better and the other one, you know, I feel sorry. So I said, okay, maybe we can try. But I worry that they come up and make trouble, so I, I never thought I would be able to, to bear it. But then they came up like that, just stay in their room quietly, sit right in front of my room, quietly. I did not even know they came in. Then I did not even know when they leave. <laughs> and I did not even know when they came in. The room, just next to my, just, uh, just uh, separate by a sliding door, that's all. And the sliding door is not like completely shut so that I hear nothing, no. They just don't make any noise. I wasn't sure if they even breathe. <laughs> Yeah, that's a completely 360 degree difference from normally they are. And I thought, okay, maybe they're uh, older now, so they're quiet, but it's not true. 
because when I'm not in my room and the door is not shut and they come in, they see me, then at the same theater again. <laughs> zooming, zooming everywhere, jumping everywhere and licking everywhere. <laughs> Roman till they drop dead. <sighs> I say, you done? <laughs> you done, huh? Okay, and then they just give up and then I give them some veggie to chew and some snacks and then and then all quiet down then. But whenever they first came in, they had to make like a train coming, you know, a theater like that. Always, never fail, and none of them failed to do the same theater. So I was wrong. I thought maybe they're older now, that's why they don't make noise anymore. It's not true. Not because, it's just because I close the door and they know I'm meditating. They don't dare. Can you imagine that? Yeah. Oh, so small dogs and only three, three years and a half now, understood everything in English, huh? <laughs> they are Thai dogs. They understood everything day one already. Day one they understood me already when I was only one month plus old. And then now they, of course, are very, very, very obedient. And one dog is so smart. He's, he's the most zealous of all, but he's so smart. He wants to be leader of the whole group. But the other black girl did not let. So she lead the black group, he lead the white group. So we call it one black group, one white group. It's like that. And he's so smart, absolutely smart. I never teach him to, to shake hands with me. But whenever he come in, he shook my hand. Or whenever I uh, take out the bone, I say, shake hand first, and immediately <laughs> he shook my hand. And if I tell him to sit down, he sit. I never taught him. I mean, normally you have to train for a while until they do that. No, he trained himself, all by himself. <laughs> he lay down, he sissy sassy all by himself, and I tell him, get up, don't make any more theater. And then he get up and I go somewhere in a corner somewhere. <laughs> I say, I have to work now. I don't have time to rub your belly later, okay? <laughs> and then he just <laughs> got him embarrassed and, <laughs> and then left, go in the corner in his bed or whatever. And uh, sometimes I feel sorry. I said, okay, okay, come here, I just rub two seconds, okay? No more, all right? You know I'm very busy, right? And then he don't demand. He just licked my hand to tell me that he understood. And then uh, the, the smaller one, whenever I come, she kiss me all over from the head to the toe. <laughs> yeah, first she, she licks my toes, and then because she's too small, she, she doesn't jump that high. She licks the toes, and then I had to sit down and hug her and, and carry her up, and then she licked me all over. That's the opportunity, you know, <laughs> to, to, to kiss all over my face. And I'm all wet and drooled all over. Yeah. And then my hands, you know, first my face and then my hand. And then if I put her down, she licked my toes again. I said, not again. <laughs> Don't bribe me anymore. I am really busy. <laughs> And then I say, go up on the sofa, and then she jump up on the sofa. Very obedient, these dogs, and I don't even have time to train them. Day one, day two, they already obey me, absolute. There's no question asked that I am their uh, pack, <laughs> pack alpha. It's not because they understood English, because others also speak English. They play deaf, you know. What? And then I turn around, go somewhere else, hide under somewhere. Oh, hide behind me, hide under my legs, whatever. Until I have to scold them. Get out, man. People don't have all day to wait for you. Go out and then come back, okay? But they know they don't not always be able to come back right away. It take two hours something to feed, to go out again, and get clean in again, and then, and then come back up. But uh, also because we take turn before the retreat. They take turns. Black group come and then white group come after. You know, like black group morning. But normally morning, even before, even if I close my door, they make so much noise, so, so I don't let them come in the morning. So they know they, they have to wait until noon at least. And then the other group take turns, so I don't see until next day. After lunch and then after dinner, two groups had to take turns. So they know that it's not like they can stay all day, like before. They grow up and they become more territorial. They know that, but they just have to do this dog stuff. I have all the dogs before, they are not like that, but these dogs are because they are more wild. They are born in the wild, and their mother has never been touched by human even, until I came. One of the owners of the golf course house, she asked the doctor to come and to sedate her so that they can spay her. He is very good. He used his mouth to blow, blow the, the needle. 
the sedating uh, needle to her and it hit her all right but she don't stay there she went hide somewhere and sleep <laughs> until she wake up so they never can get her so then the last last time the doctor want to do the same I said no no I forbid you look at her she's only skin and bone if you do that she might never wake up can you guarantee me that she wakes up I forbid you don't do it and then later I took in her babies and she just come knocking at the door she wants to go in my house <laughs> First, I, I caught her and then I, I give her a chain to, to bind her in my door so that I can give her food and clean her up so that she can come in to stay with the, the baby. But she always escaped. Even with a chain, she used her magic to break it. To break one part of the chain, yeah? It's not a big chain like for big dog, yeah? It's for medium size. But the chain is a chain. It's stainless steel. She broke it. Wow. She broke the part because we put it next to her neck so she cannot bite. So the only thing, <laughs> she broke it by magic. And then she left like that. I said, okay, you're not coming anymore. You went out, eat garbage, and then you will give the dog, your baby, some sickness or problem. I won't let you in anymore. But then she came, wagging tail, begging, crying. I said, are you really ready to come in? Because you come in, I will clean you and they will inject you and then you cannot come out anymore until you're more used to with the humans and then you don't make trouble. Then she did not. And just a few days later, I can carry her everywhere already on my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And she stay, yeah. And even if I let her in the garden, she come back. She doesn't run to the wild anymore. Because she knows, I say there are food in the house and the clean water. You have to take care so that your, your baby won't get sick by your infecting them. You are strong, you may have good immune system, but your baby are young, cannot. So she did listen. And she is now the worst of the pack. Every time she come in, she cry the louder, she jump the higher, she... <laughs> she even spoke English just to... <laughs> to say sorry that she has n not uh, behaved or she thought she might misbehave or something. She says she's sorry. If she did something wrong, she's sorry. I say, no, you did nothing wrong. Just I need to be alone to be on retreat. I did not abandon you because you did something wrong. Even if you did, I would forgive you. I never abandoned you. If you did something wrong, you're just a dog. She's even desperate. So she spoke English. She never did before. No other dog so desperate like her. Before, she don't even want to see me. If I come out of the balcony, she run away. <laughs> later, I have her baby, so she come run around the house, and later she has to come knocking by herself <laughs> at my door. And now she is the most, you know, sticking around dog <laughs> from the whole group. <laughs> she loves me the most. She is more grateful, and she is one of the ones that fought for me fought with the negative power, and then she got wounded like that. And the negative used the other dog stronger, you know, and more zealous to, to attack her instead. Yeah, that's what, how it happened. And the other dog told me that she's terribly sorry. She wasn't willing to, but she, she was pushed to do it. And she's not strong enough. She's just a dog. And the other power is stronger. Kind of sorcerer kind of power, you know? Black magic, astral, hell level kind of power. She's just a dog. She's the strongest one of all, but she's just a dog. And her power is not as strong. I say, okay, don't worry, I forgive you. I forgive you. And I still let her come back to see me, uh, taking turn like all the dogs. I have never scolded you. I hug her, I love her. I say, we will dilute this and you will get better. Don't worry. Don't worry, I forgive you. This is not your fault. And she licked me all over to thank me. Oh, my God, there's no end to the story of my dogs. <laughs> I'm telling you some so that maybe you appreciate your dogs more. Or the outside people, they won't kill dogs anymore. Or they take in the dogs and take good care of them and love them. Uh, if I have more time or maybe later, if I can remember some other things, I will tell you. The things that they do, they're all very protective, all very protective. One, one dog, she's so skinny because she worries a lot about me. She never wants to leave my sight. She's the most difficult to get out of my house, to go do business and eat <laughs> and walk. She just hide everywhere and it was difficult to find her. Before, I did not understand. I thought the assistant did not try to take her out, did not try hard enough. Later, I know. 
but she was hiding until I really yelling, where are you? Come out now! <laughs> and then she crawling out with her tail crawling on the table, you know, <laughs> the tail under under the stomach and crawling out. <laughs> and I say, out, and then she runs. And she's the most skinny because she doesn't eat very well when I'm not there. She worries so much, but I cannot just have her alone. I have to take turn like that. I said to her, I have many dogs. I would love to be alone with you. Uh, her name is Loyalty, huh? Yeah. I say you are very loyal and you care so much about me, and I truly appreciate it. But please understand, my time is limited, and I'm only one, and I love all of you. I cannot give any of you away. So you just have to share it. And she understands. Still, she likes to stick around. She understands is one thing, but <laughs> her heart doesn't want to understand. <laughs> so I always do some this kind of hiding. <laughs> And then until you cannot, then get out. Yeah. She cares so much about me that even if I cough, she immediately came in running and asked, what's the matter, what's the matter, are you all right? Even when she was younger, very young and loved to play, you know, with toys and with mother, with sister. But if she hear me cough, she immediately run to my side and check on me. That's why she doesn't eat a lot. Very skinny, but she's okay. She says she's healthy. Oh, she looks like that. She jumps so high because she's so thin. <laughs> she jumps very high and very, very fast. So I reckon she's healthy. What can I do? Before, we used to feed her with serine, but I'm worried if we go in the wrong, wrong pipe, that will be worse. So I just let it be and I feed her as much as I can and they feed her as much as they can and, and she's okay. I mean, there are also humans who are skinny but also healthy. Yes, yes. But she's too skinny compared to all of them. Even the mother before was skinnier than her, but now she's plump. You know, she eats well, she sleeps good, she feels secure, and she regains and so, so beautiful and, and round now. But that little one never, never. She, one time we keep feeding her with serine so that she become a little rounder. And then I left for four months because coming back to Taiwan, cannot take them at that moment because the law have to wait. And I came back four months without seeing them, and she get back to skinny again, and never regain because I don't have enough time. And the assistant, I don't trust them to give food like this, and I'm worried, okay? So I just let it be, and she seems okay. And whenever she come up, I try to feed her what I can, but she's still not as good, not as good. She worries so much. She just wants to be next to me all the time, to take care of me, to check on me. That's why it is. Too much love, too much love. And protective as well, no? even if she's small, but if she knows something, she always jump out, you know? Fight, also fight with the negative. And uh, sometimes the bigger dog kind of uh, harassing the smaller dog, she always jump between them and lay on top of the smaller dog so that the other one don't bite her. The, the smallest one always have trouble with other dogs, some of them, but uh, this one, she always jump on top of her and protect her all the time. When some of my, and like maybe a guard or someone come in, or a stranger, you know, the one who doesn't take care of them, they only trust me and the caretakers, if a good one. If not good one, they would tell me that is no good. Yes. Not because I discriminate, but because if they continue to stay, they will make a bad energy and the dog will fight. I saw that many times, so I had to let some of the people go. And uh, if somebody come in, you know, another zealous dog barking at them and kind of very strong, zealously want to threaten them or something, yeah, not biting, but threaten, then she always run around that person or in front of that person to protect, to tell the other one, stop it, stop it, <laughs> like that. Not only she protects me, she protects other dogs and other beings, other humans as well. The other are more zealous because it's, they, they are a leader, yeah? And they want to protect me. That's all. They don't care who comes. Even God comes, <laughs> they also bark <laughs> and threaten them <laughs> to be away from me. Stay away, something like that. There's no end to what dog would do for you. I don't know any human who cannot love dog. Any human who cannot love dogs, they have a problem. Okay, never mind. 
I just hope some people listen to this and know that dogs are very noble race of beings. Even if by karma they had to come back, yeah, they still are noble beings. They've been trained, they've been taught, programmed to be noble and protective like that. Karma, because a dog also needs to, to pay for their karma, yeah? We feed them meat, we feed them fish. If they come back, they have to pay all that as well. Or if because they protected us and they hurt someone else, yeah? Or hurt other animals, they have to pay for their karma too. Yeah, they know all that. They know more than we do. They still do it. They do it, but for good cause, yeah? Not like most of us do it just for selfish reason or glutonous reason or, or fun or whatever, like go out hunting for fun. Not because poor or have no money, they have to go out to survive on the wild, but no, go out hunting for fun. Big, strong men harassing and, and cornering the small little rabbits or whatever and then kill them like that and say it's fun. Or kill the ducks, you know, wild ducks like that and call that fun, game, whatever. Yeah, game. I call that a silly game, wicked game, yeah. Men so big and strong should not do this kind of thing. It's not a gentleman way to live. Especially you are rich and you have enough food to eat. Why go out and harass a little rabbit or the baby deer who is so innocent and so sweet and doing nothing wrong? Yeah. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I made enough enemies already. I'm continuing to make more like this. <laughs> no wonder. <laughs> no wonder your master has to run sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, against all these big corporates, and then they continue. <laughs> all right, never mind. I don't apologize. I am not sorry to say anything I have said. I I could say more even, but they sometimes they edited my talk. You know, yeah, they don't let all this coming out. Uh, okay, whatever. Yeah, whatever. Okay, if you don't have anything to tell me or question me, then I take leave from you. Until next time. Thank you so much, Master. We love you, Master. You are number one to us also, Master. Thank you. We Thank love you. you so much. Thank you for loving me. Thank you. Very much. Thank you, for loving me. Thank you for being good human beings. We try, Master. Thank you for practicing well. And thank you for supporting me mentally or any otherwise to help human beings and the planet and the animals. I thank you all for every little thing you do. To have Supreme Master Television, to help my mission, to help save the planet, to help save the world, to help save humans and animals. I deeply thank you. Thank and God you. bless you. See you next time. God bless. So long, eh? Thank you so much. Love you. Love you. Love you. Love you. Forever. <laughs>